Hello, everyone. Um, good afternoon for some of you. Good, 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 good morning for others. Maybe good evening for other ones as well. Uh, we are in a global um, live today. And my name is Philip. I work for DDS. I'm an international partners manager, uh, channel manager. And um, today I, I, I'm pleased to introduce Dr. Christoph Morbitze. He is the CEO of Equa uh, Solutions AG. And we're going to be talking about ESBO, which is a plugin in DDS CAD that we can perform cooling load calculation. So welcome, Christoph. Yeah, hello from my side also to, to everybody. Uh, as Philippe said, I'm I'm the uh, CEO of um, Equa Solutions AG, which is Equa's presence for Germany, Austria, and Switzerland. And um, I'm very pleased to show you today the um, uh, cooling load application that we've developed for you. Um, are you able to click to, to start the presentation, Christian? All right, okay, should, should I start with the presentation already? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Uh, sorry, that was a, a slight uh, communication breakdown. Uh, so basically, um, uh, we want to give you some background to ESPO, to the tool, uh, before we start showing you the tool in operation. Um, uh, Equa has developed since uh, 1995 a simulation environment and our uh, main product for the building sector uh, since 1995 was really the simulation environment either indoor climate and energy and um, in this name actually the the IDA uh, this is the um, uh, this is the um, uh, calculation engine. This is the tool that, that does the that does the number crunching. And um, indoor climate and energy. Uh, this stands for the user interfaces. And here you see user interfaces for the building uh, that we are modeling, but also for the plant and also for the for the control. And um, this is really a very sophisticated um, simulation environment uh, that can be used by simulation experts and by people who use simulation on a very regular basis. And um, what we what we really try to achieve um, through the ESPO environment is that we are keeping the, the calculation engine that does the number crunching. So it's a very sophisticated simulation engine uh, but then we have um, developed a series of interfaces uh, which are very easy to use. So they are for the non-simulation expert for the for the occasional user and ESPO stands for early stage building optimization. And here you see a sample of these interfaces um, that we provide, but um, we will give you a live demo um, in, a, in a short moment. And then we introduce these interfaces in, in more detail. So that's the background to ESPO and uh, the history to ESPO and also a bit of history to um, uh, to ECWA and our capabilities, technical capabilities. So now I'm handing over again to Philippe, who is going to give you an overview how you create a um, uh, a cut model from uh, how you how you export a cut model from DDS cut to ESPO. Excellent, thank you, Christoph. So I will close this PowerPoint and. Uh, <clears throat> I'm just opening now uh, DDS CAD. Um, okay, so what we will do, we will simulate um, uh, the cooling calculation for some of the rooms for this building. Okay, so what I will show right now is some of the steps that we have to run in DDS CAD before we, we, we go to the calculation inside ESBO. Uh, something that uh, I can explain to you up front is that uh, in this case, this building was modeled in DDS CAD. Imagine that uh, you, you're just receiving the DWG or PDF of your, of your um, building. So in this case, the building should be uh, uh, modeled in DDS CAD. Otherwise, if you are already working in a BIM environment, in a BIM workflow, you can import an IFC of the building and then we can go from this point. 
So we see here the complete building. I will just open a, a level. Okay, as you can see here, one step to take is the, the, the definition of the true north. So here in the properties, when we don't have anything uh, selected, we see the properties of the beauty. If I click on this lock, I have access to this true north. I could uh, insert this parameter manually, like 100, uh, 135 degrees, or I can simply click on this symbol and I can, I can insert in a model like uh, 225, like this, okay? So it's your call. This is one step to, to take in EDS CAD. The second step is the insertion of the U value um, of the building components. So there are different ways to do that in EDS CAD in, in different levels. We could simply go to one of these numbers. When we have these numbers, they represent the, the, the walls. So if I would like to insert the U value only for this wall, I can double click here and I can access this uh, tab U value. And then I would insert the layers where I can get the information as the, the thickness of the, of the layers. And then I will also get this important information as the density and the, the thermal coefficient. Of, uh, of the layers, okay? So this is important in order to, to perform the, the, the calculations in ESBO. This will be transferred to ESBO. But of course, um, if we do it one by one, it will be uh, uh, ant work. So what we can do in DDS CAD, we can go to the building function, and then in the tab uh, U value, we can see all the, the building components for the complete building. So if I double click this wall uh, 100, uh, of uh, 11.5 centimeters, I will be changing and mapping all uh, the walls that have these properties on my complete building. So it becomes a much uh, faster work, workflow, okay? Um, so after we have set the, the layer components for, for, for the buildings, uh, for the building components, we can go to, to ESBO. In DDS CAD 15, we have a bidirectional interface with ESBO. So we come to the menu tools, <clears throat> and then we go to this function called cooling load calculation. All right, so for, for this demonstration, um, we could, of course, run the, the calculation for the complete building. Otherwise, we could just create some zones and simulate or import just these zones uh, as I, we would do in this case. What I have done and prepared in my model, I created some a zone called offices. So we will simulate that only the offices rooms will we'll, we'll receive the calculation. So let's pretend that we have just one machine, just for the offices. So we see here the column AHU or a handling unit. Uh, this will be the, the, the rooms that will be imported to ESBO. All the others I will turn off. So I will click on one of them and turn off in a column import. And one tricky thing, I can right mouse click and click copy. Now right mouse click another one like this, and then I scroll down to the end, press shift key, right mouse click at the end, and I can paste. So all these, um, these rooms that uh, have turned off will not, be, will not be imported. So the next step now is just to click OK. I have a template, a default template that will be used for this demonstration. And okay, now ESBO is, is opened and I can come back and give the control to Christoph that will explain uh, how to, to work with ESBO, okay? Uh, let okay. me know.
if you already have control or if I have to give you control again? Um, no, I think I have control. No, okay, hang so on. No you, no, you need to give me control. I don't have. I will turn off my webcam. Okay. Okay, perfect. So now you can see me again. And um, okay, so here we see um, the model that we've uh, that we've imported into our uh, ESPO simulation environment, and um, it's quite easily structured. You see here is a is a room uh, tab uh, where you can specify the data for the for the various um, rooms that have been um, imported um, from DDS CAD. Um, then there is a um, building tab where you specify building related data and uh, when I click here onto the 3D view um, I can now see the the spaces that um, that have been that have been imported and um, there is also a VDI tab in um, the cooling load uh, calculation that we will show you today is over here which is based on the Austria heat response method and uh, but we there's a different method in germany which is called the vdi 2078 and for that one we've also developed a module and uh, that then has a, has a different tab cost of functions are slightly um, different okay um, but let's go back to the room tab and start having a look at the data that that we can specify for the different rooms and um, so when i'm Clicking here, you may have seen this before. The display changes uh, of the view uh, of, of the room, uh, and also here the data changes. Although right now it's the same data for every room because we've used the same template. And um, so let's go to the room uh, uh, 001 office, and let's start with the internal gains. So this is obviously relevant to the um, to the cooling load calculation. What sort of heat gains do we have from from equipment, from occupant, and from from light um, that's within um, that's within the room? And uh, so here, when you click onto equipment, you can specify what sort of heat is emitted um, uh, by by the equipment. But actually, what you should really use is um, is this one here. We say so many watts per square meter uh, that you're getting from from the um, uh, from equipment. Um, when I go into occupants, I can specify what sort of activity level uh, these these people have, and the activity level will then have an impact on on the heat um, that um, that the occupants emit. And down here is is lighting, and again you specify what's per square meter. Uh, you can also specify the schedules um, when um, occupants are in the space or when the when the light is turned on. Uh, or when equipment is turned on and when I now click onto the schedule you can see it, it's always on just now uh, but I could alter that uh, so for instance this relates not to the occupants and I could say they they um, they enter the space at um, there's a bit of a delay now here you know this um, I'm actually based in Germany just now and uh, Philip is in Brazil and I'm trying to operate his computer. Um, so that doesn't work, but it's it's not really a problem. Basically, you, you can imagine you would then define a profile here uh, for this um, for this schedule and that, that would then be the, um, applied. Um, Next to the internal gains is the indoor climate standards. And uh, when I put a double click onto, uh, onto this here, then you can see um, temperature um, set points uh, for heating. So heating set points and cooling set points. And um, this is fairly standard, uh, what you will know from other calculation tools or other calculation engines. But what we're also having is here a standard for the, um, for the air quality, for the CO2 levels. And um, uh, because the calculations are based on, on the original IDA system, we have a very sophisticated occupant model that um, will calculate not only the heat uh, that is emitted by the occupants, depending on the activity level that you've specified, but also the, the moisture that is emitted, the humidity, and also the CO2 that, that is um, emitted. And here you say, what is the maximum CO2 level that you want to allow for um, in the room? 
and um, and then when we're going down here to to ventilation um, you will now see that we're sort of going full circus full circuit because you have the, the possibility to specify constant air volume but you can also um, have a, a variable air volume system and when I click onto this then you then you see that you have the option uh, to have it either temperature controlled for cooling purposes but also CO2 controlled or even the combination of the two so uh, this is, uh, is a very neat function because um, during the cooling load calculation you can already specify characteristics of the um, of the air handling unit system that you want to apply later on and you don't have to do the air handling unit planning uh, as a second stage following the cooling load calculation but you can um, you can do a combined study of the room and of the systems and uh, and therefore as part of the cooling load calculation already develop um, systems solutions for the for the ventilation of the of the building and um, what we want to do here now for this room is that we say we actually have no ventilation because this is the case that you that you're also getting you may want to design for a for a fan call system in your space and you want to have no mechanical ventilation from uh, from the air handling unit and then you're just saying it's a constant air volume system and um, uh, uh, and it has no um, ventilation rates and um, now we are going to the other extreme we're going to the to the room 002 and here we say in terms of um, in terms of ventilation so we want to use this VAV system uh, that we've talked about earlier on and um, and it's going to be um, temperature controlled and here we have a minimum value and a maximum value so this is going to be the minimum ventilation rate that will always occur in the space and um, and this is the maximum ventilation rate that um, that the system can run in case the ventilation rate should be increased to provide additional cooling uh, to the space. So now we've got these two alterations that we've um, that we've carried out, and um, uh, of course, what is also now relevant is what is the supply temperature? With which uh, temperature do you actually provide the air um, into the room? And this you actually specify in the building tab. And um, and here you have for the distribution systems, you have the air um, interface that you can open up. And um, and here you can now see that the supply temperature um, can be specified as a constant value, but also as a, a function of the ambient air. And uh, and then this this would be would be alterated, yeah, uh, depending on what sort of outside air temperature um, you're having. Uh, whilst we're here on this building tab, I also want to show you here the advanced setting tab, because uh, um, as Philippe said, we have a very global audience today. Uh, you design in different units and different parts of the world. Uh, here you have the option to, uh, to specify whether you want to design in uh, cube meters per hour or, or liter per second, uh, both, both as possible. Um, you could also go one step further and have a look at the air handling unit itself here, but I think this is a bit of an overkill. Right at the end, I'm going to show you some features um, of, of this bit here, because you can do a complete plant model also with ESPO, but for the time being, uh, just bear in mind the air handling unit is also uh, is also included, and you can um, you can allow for air handling unit characteristics during the load calculation, but you don't need to. You can also just limit it to the specification of the supply temperature. Okay, now um, I've already been here in this building 3D uh, and shading uh, menu, and I will open this again because I want to show you a bit how you can how you can allow for shading of either the windows um, or actually the entire building uh, if you want to model shading of the entire building um, you have the option here to have um, vertical shading and uh, the first thing what i do is i i draw this object here or i move this object into the model and um, when when this is done i can put it into the edit mode and uh, then i have the option now to to move this vertex here 
And so this may be a situation that you have a building on the other side of the street um, of this building that you actually, um, where you want to carry out the, the cooling load calculation. And um, then of course, this is not, uh, not a very tall building, but I have the option to perform a double click onto this object and, uh, and then say, okay, this is actually, let's say 15 meters tall. And, uh, and then this will be taken into account during your cooling load calculation. Uh, you also have the option in various ways to um, allow for the shading of the windows. And so, so that you can see a bit better what I'm doing is I'm, I'm going to remove this side shading object. And um, the first thing that you can do is you can have some, some fins on the side of the windows. And um, so I include this in here and I associate it with, um, with this um, window. You can see now that the definition doesn't make a lot of sense because these fins, they should actually be on the side. So what I need to do is I put a double click onto these, um, these fins. And first of all, I say they, they should be positioned uh, at the side of the window. And, uh, and also they are nine meters apart. So now this is okay. And um, I'm going to specify that they're slightly higher. So I'm going to say two meters high. And uh, and also this this y value that you see here, this is measured actually from the bottom of the of the wall. And uh, I think 0.6 was the correct value. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And let's make it a bit deeper the the shading. So let's say it's um, it's a meter deep. And uh, then we have this one here as a, as a shading object. And um, uh, yeah, I could also do the same thing with an overhang and um, and so on and so forth. Um, but you also have the possibility to specify shading um, of the window um, itself, so sort of um, window integrated shading, not facade integrated shading. And to do that, I'm going to close this um, and go back to the go back to the room tab. And uh, now I need to know which uh, building this is exactly. Let's go here. And um, oops. Now um, I have opened up um, the, the window form and here now I have the option to specify different window integrated shading systems. So it could be a Marquisolet, it could be an awning, it could be a Venetian blind or a screen. And, um, and these systems that you, can, that you can select here now, uh, they can even be controlled. Um, you can see here the control strategies, so that could be controlled depending on the solar radiation or all sorts of other um, aspects um, uh, that you are seeing here. Okay, so this this was shading, and this is really um, one of the the key aspects that that you need to know or that that you should know about. Of course, there's many other things that. Uh, that that could be relevant, but but sort of the, the so some key features that you may want to use when you carry out a cooling load calculation. And uh, so now let's go to the simulation tab and say we want to run a cooling load calculation, and um, uh, and start with a simulation. That's going to take now a minute or two. Um, uh, perhaps we have any questions uh, right now that we could already answer. You know, we normally want to say that we take questions at the end, but uh, this would be an opportunity now. Philip, if you could produce a question very quickly. Yeah, um, th there is one question uh, mm -hmm. that we, we did not cover yet, is how to, to change the city something because i saw that the, the the location of the of this presentation is to of these demonstrations to kalmar but um yeah one of the questions is how to yeah. set another location and if the location is not in a in a database how it could be set manually yeah mm -hmm. okay i'll i'll do this um in a second then because uh, actually the, the simulation now is, uh, is finished, the cooling load calculation is finished. And, um, and now we're having here this, this overview table. And um, we, we can now interrogate certain things. We can see when the cooling load actually occurred in the, in the building. 
And uh, so we can see, depending on the orientation, sometimes the peak is during the summertime. But uh, with with modern buildings, um, you also have when you have east or well in the northern hemisphere, I should say, um, but actually also in the southern hemisphere, when you have east or west orientation, um, then um, the cooling load will be in times when um, uh, with a with a different sun position. So. Basically, what I want to say is the cooling load can occur throughout the year, um, so that's that's important to take into account. And um, now this is this room um, uh, 001 that we specified um, um, at the beginning, and you may remember that we've uh, turned off the ventilation for this for this space, and so there is no cooling from the ventilation because there is no ventilation uh, in here. Uh, so everything is met by the by the room unit uh, that you're seeing here, and um, but then for the for the other spaces um, you have you have different situations. You have cooling from the room unit, but also from uh, from ventilation. What I was meant to do, what I actually forgot to do, was for the VAV system. I forgot to delete the room unit. So now we have a cooling from the VAV system, but also from the from the room, room unit here. And uh, so this is the first level. It's like an, like an overview um, that you're getting, and uh, like a report. And the next level you can go to is that you say go to the summary page. And here you now you have your spaces again, your rooms, and um, and you have uh, different um, key characteristics that um, occurred in this room during um, when when the cooling demand peaked. And uh, if you really want to go into detail, you also have the option to go to the details tab. And um, now here I can go to the to a particular month, and then you can see either for the building, but also for the for the different rooms of your model. You can see all sort of uh, characteristics. So you can see the temperature. So you can see an energy balance. So you can really, really understand um, how the room ticks and use this information to um, uh, carry out further improvements to the to the room. Now coming back to the question that that Philip has just um, uh, uh, read back to me. So here is where you specify the the location of the building. And uh, you either have the option to to load something from the database, or uh, if uh, if a location is not um, available, then you can also go to the download um, part here. And here you have, um, I think, over 3,000 locations worldwide that you can select from. And uh, so I can now go to um, well, let's let's go to let's go to Brazil. And um, and um, then I need to. There's a bit of delay here with uh, Bolivia and here's Brazil now. And so so these are um, uh, locations in Brazil where you can get uh, both data for load calculations, cooling load calculations, but also heating load calculations, and also annual climate sets because you may also want to use. Um, uh, uh, the ESPO environment, uh, perhaps to do comfort studies where you where you simulate an entire year. And um, we're getting towards the end of my part, and I want to give you some notion what you may want to do um, with with ESPO in addition to carrying out um, load calculations. And you may not want to do this um, at the beginning. At the beginning, you, when you start using ESPO, you'll probably focus on load calculations. But then over time, when you get more familiar with the environment, you have all sorts of other options what you can do. Um, the first option I want to show you is that you can actually uh, simulate real supply systems. Because um, uh, during this load calculation, uh, we used uh, generic, uh, generic coolers. So they only uh, they, they they emit always the cooling exactly the cooling that is required to keep the building at set point. Uh, but you can see here that you uh, that you have all sorts of you can model chill beams, fan coil systems. Um, you you can you can simulate um, 
uh, cooling panels at the ceiling and you can even model real products. We have a cooperation with um, Svegon and there is all sorts of products from Svegon that, that are available. Um, so you yeah, you can really say with this particular product that I put into this room, what sort of temperatures do I get uh, over the year? And um, you may even want to undersize the system slightly and then have a look at the peak temperatures that, you, that you're getting in the space. And um, the other thing coming back to the building tub uh, that I want to show you is the fact that you can also model the generation systems. So you could model solar thermal, you can model, you can model heat storage, uh, a cold storage system that could even be seasonal storage system. Um, you can model boreholes, you can uh, you can model heat pumps, all sorts of things um, uh, can also be uh, taken into account and, uh, and then you may take the building model um, to determine the load uh, that you're getting over the year in your building and, um, and then you're using ESPO to actually generate um, a, a strategy for the heating and cooling generation of, um, of the building. Okay, but uh, coming back to the original topic that uh, that we really want to talk about, which is the uh, the cooling load calculation uh, using the S Cut Espo. Uh, as we said earlier, we've got the results, and now I'm going to hand over to Philippe again, who's who going to show you um, how these results can be re-imported into um, DDS Cut. Okay, I just unmuted myself. I'm sorry. <laughs> There's no delay. Thank you very much so far, um, uh, Christoph. W what we have to do after we run the calculation is to export. Uh, let me just open my webcam again and I will um, close from Christoph. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah, let's. Okay, um, after we run the calculation, we have this exportation button, so export results. So we simply click here, and uh, a, a, a file name will be will will, will be there. Uh, by default, DDSCAD understands the name as results, so we have to click here just to, to have the name of the file as results. Uh, .ifc, okay, so we click save. It will be saved in a, in a in the project folder. So I would just replace because I have ran a test um, previously. And then we come back to, to DDS CAD. So there are two ways to, to show the results. As you can see, there are already some results here. Probably they will be updated. Um, so when we use the function room and we enter a room, and of course, um, I just made the calculation in in the um, in these uh, in the offices rooms sorry i forgot to 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 use this option because i transferred from esbo to dds cad but uh, in in dds cad the bidirectional interface we must use this option to recognize the, and, and transfer back the results so i will click on cooling load calculation results transfer okay and um this is a, a text that uh, would show the results, but uh, let me show you from the room function. If we enter a room, we have the tab called cooling load, where we can see the, the cooling set point, the calculated max, uh, maximum temperature, the sensible cooling load, and the total cooling load. So these are the, the results that we can see in the room tab, but uh, we can also see, as, 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 you, as you see here, a text, um, a intelligent text that can also show this information. We can um, make an EDS card this text available for all rooms using this function text all rooms. And I predefined this part text just to, to show the, the cooling information and also the, the number and the description of the room. So if I click here, this information would be uh, updated. Okay, so these are the, the results that we can we can show in the DS card and having these results, we can continue uh, the work uh, of the modeling inside the DS card. All right, so we cover the, the workflow between the modeling the DS card, inserting the information, then going to ESBO and then having the, the, the results back to, to DDS card. 
now um, we we are free to to answer the the questions if we have some um, I I see that there are, there are some people that um, uh, raise their hands uh, if you are able to uh, to ask your questions and Gage, and if you saw some questions uh, passing by, can you help us to to see yes. them? Yes, there are questions coming in. Uh, Luca raised his hand. Uh, we will uh, give him control of uh, answering uh, or asking his question. Um, Luca, can you hear us? He is unmuted. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm sorry, it was a mistake. <laughs> on the okay, yeah, yeah. no worries, no worries. Uh, we, we got some other questions coming in. Uh, uh, Christoph already showed the locations. There was a question coming in from Pablo. Is it also possible uh, to have the sun uh, position for entering the latitude longitude of the location? Can you answer that question, uh, Christoph? Um, I'm not 100% sure whether I understand the question. Um, well, I go ahead anyway, and if it's not the right, if I'm not referring to the question, then please let me know. Um, so um, basically, the the sun positions they're uh, they're always calculated by by the um, uh, simulation engine. Uh, so here, when I specify a location, so in this case it, it was Kalmar, then here I've got the longitude and, and the latitude, which is automatically attributed, and it's attributed for all of the thousands of locations that you can download. And um, yeah, as I said, then um, uh, sun positions are calculated for every calculation time step that is um, uh, that is that that is performed during the cooling load calculation, and um, I, I said earlier on that uh, the cooling load may occur in different times of the year. That is actually something I should have um, said when I when I started off. Um, when you're doing a cooling load calculation, um, DDS Cut Espo actually, in principle, could simulate the entire year. Uh, uh, and this is for the for the reason that I've that I've stated that um, sometimes a lower sun position is um, creates a um, uh, higher cooling load uh, than a high ambient temperature because when you got high ambient temperature that the sun may have a higher position but all this is taken into account during the calculation uh, so did this answer the question? <laughs> Yes, in the meantime, uh, uh, the question is answered. The Pablo okay. is happy with, uh, with this question. We have another second question also related to the location of the calculation uh, to use Porto Alegre in, uh, in Brazil. Uh, Anderson is asking that. Uh, can you find that location very easily? Um, well, let's see. Yeah. Let's I know there is Porto Alegre there in the, in the database, but uh, after you also insert this, Christoph, uh, you can find Porto Alegre and afterwards, what if the, 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 the location is not in this database? Yeah. How we can set this manually? Yeah. Um, well, uh, as I said, it's, it's a very extensive uh, database. I can go I can, I can go. It will be easy okay. for me because I, I'm, I've done this previously. So. Right. Porto okay. Alegre. So, so there we got Porto Alegre, and um, so if your um, uh, if your location doesn't happen to be available, uh, you would need to select uh, need to select something that's uh, sort of uh, the closest to it, um, which um, which could be a um, uh, a location in your country. Uh, but uh, for instance, we we had cases in the past um, where we had projects in Nigeria, and actually um, uh, in this uh, database that we make available, Nigeria is is not covered. Uh, so in that case, um, uh, it's a bit problematic. Uh, but um, uh, and there's a certain uncertainty when you're then uh, choosing an alternative uh, location. Uh, but for for many countries, like for Germany, for instance, um, uh, it shouldn't really be 
a problem uh, if your precise location is not available to choose something that's um, uh, that's close enough. Okay. All right. Perfect. Um, next question uh, asked in the in the question uh, window uh, for the radiation into the rooms is the glass type type of glass also taking into consideration, and can it yes, be easily that's... changed? Yeah. That's that's a that's a very good question actually, uh, because something that I that I hadn't really um, touched on uh, was the fact that we have a very very detailed um, uh, window model, and uh, this is based on the um, ISO standard fifteen oh ninety nine, and when you see here the the glazing uh, for instance, um, then um, doesn't uh, no, now it opens up then you see here we have um, uh, the solar heat gain coefficient so the very often it's called g value we, we give the g value as a reference value um, but then uh, we're actually having the different panes here the different glass panes and there is a solar radiation calculation carried out for every for every glass pane so so there is um, uh, transmission, absorption, and reflection calculated for this glass pane, um, but then out of the radiation that is transmitted through the first uh, pane, uh, it's it's again performed here for um, for, for the second pane also, um, and um, there could be coated glass in here. So, so this is this is very very detailed really, and. Um, uh, and this ISO standard 15099, this also um, uh, covers um, shading systems. So if I now go, go for instance, say I want to have some blinds in here, and um, uh, when I then open up the related form, then you can see here that the geometry of the of the blinds um, is also taken into account. So the the width of the blind and the uh, the distance between the blinds and the angle. Um, is also taken into account. And then this radiation calculation that I referred to is also uh, carried out not only for the for the glazing, but also here for this blind system. So there is going to be a reflection uh, from every single slot uh, of your Venetian blind system that, that you're having here. Well, perfect, thank you. Um, another question coming in from Luciano from Italy. He will ask your question with his uh, with his microphone. Mm -hmm. Luciano, please go ahead. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we can hear. Okay. My question is uh, regarding the amount of fresh air uh, for uh, each room. Uh, before uh, you shown um, air uh, the amount of air for person, but there are many standards uh, which requires uh, air for person and for surface of the room. Is it possible to include both information? Um, it's uh, it's actually the um, the the def this this definition here where you specify the um, uh, the ventilation rates. Uh, mm -hmm. This this is not per person, but this is really for the for the room for the space. Um, so if you have specific requirements um, in terms of ventilation that is based on the occupants um, that are located in the room, uh, you would need to calculate this um, in a separate calculation and then insert this data um, for every room. Okay. And I have another question regarding uh, humidity. Mm -hmm. is, is it possible to make the calculation of the inlet temperature from uh, a rendering unit uh, based on the internal humidity? Um, e, this is in principle possible. Let me just check with the... Um, mm, no, no, it's it's not. Uh, we we do calculate the um, humidity, and and also uh, like the humidification and the cooling coil and and, and everything, and um, uh, and the 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 IDA engine can do it. You could do it with the um, with the IDA I system, but here we've uh, sort of slimmed down the user functions to to the most common ones, and that's not included, I'm afraid. Okay, 
Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you for your question, Luciano. Uh, some more questions coming in. Um, we have a question on, maybe Philippe already showed it, how the calculation on the IFC file import into DDS. That question has been uh, raised by Claude. Um, so what, what I understand is how, how do we get the results back into DDS CAT? Maybe Felipe, you can answer. Um, okay, so uh, the, again, when you come, when you are in Nesbo and you you ran already the calculation for the simulation, that doesn't matter if it's something that we didn't show today. Is I don't know if there is any 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 someone located in Germany, but uh, whether it's from uh, the VDI 2078 or for the hash rate, um, the, 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 the results uh, will be by using this function export results. So when we click here, it will save as an IFC file, but we have to map this, the name of the file as results. That's how in the DSCAD it recognizes. And the results are shown in the room tab individually in this cooling, uh, cooling load tab in the room dialog. And we can also display this information using the, the part text called text. So we can text one room or text all rooms. And this information is also available in the model as a part text. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. Uh, Bonzia, Michael, he's asking his next question, how to change the liter per second or liter per second per person uh setting to the total outdoor airflow and where can you see that in the printout so the question is does esbo has a printout and what printout does dds cat has so maybe mm -hmm. Christoph can answer first yeah um uh, well as i said it's um it's liter per second not liter per second per person and uh you can change the setting when you go to the building tab um, here's advanced settings and um, and then here, so now the unit is cube meters per hour, but I can also change this to liters per, per second. And um, now in terms of the report, so if I go to the, um, uh, sorry, to the simulation tab and uh, open up this report again, uh, then here we have the supply airflow at the time when the cooling peaked. So if you have a, a VAV system, for instance, then uh, then uh, uh, the, the actual um, ventilation rate here would, would be displayed at this time. And um, uh, yeah, and, and this is included here in this report and can also be used by the, by the designer then. And now the second part of the question, that's Philippe probably. Um, I'm not sure if uh, Gijan just can you re uh, read out the, the question if it's about the fresh air amount of air or or, or it's just about the supply. Um, the question of the outdoor airflow uh, this, uh, to see the results in the printout. So this is related to DDS printout maybe. Um, yeah, so I'll, uh, the, the, the report of the cooling calculation is just in Nesbo, so we don't have any report coming back to, to DDS CAD. The only information we have on, on DDS CAD of the results is, is the ones that uh, I showed uh, just now. Okay, Michael is now uh, giving some more information. The supply airflow is visible in the report, but the question about the outdoor. Uh, right, okay. Um, well, basically the, um, uh, I've only briefly touched uh, onto that topic, uh, I'll expand a bit. Um, in the in the building tab, um, here's where we specified the um, uh, uh, that the supply temperatures and actually the the air to the rooms is is supplied by a real air handling unit or a real virtual air handling unit uh, that you're seeing here, and uh, this air handling unit then um, uh, is provided with with um, ambient air. And um, you also have the option in 
case you you want to provide air just with ambient conditions, it, sh it shouldn't be um, uh, conditioned by the heating coil or by the cooling coil. Then you have the option, for instance, to open up the cooling coil here and uh, set uh, the um, the effectiveness to zero. So now it's it's turned off, and uh, and I could do this with the heating coil and also with the heat exchanger, um, and also that many times now we have a very sophisticated model we even take into account the temperature rise uh, through the fans um, that occurs in the system so if i now change the temperature rise to, to zero uh, then i would um, provide uh, just plain vanilla um, ambient air to the to the spaces um, did this answer the question now yes thank you very much thank you okay, very perfect. much um the software ESBO, that's the next question. Uh, in which languages is it available or is it available in different languages? Yeah, um, it's uh, in a series of different languages. Uh, and I think it's changed in the option here. Oops, language. Huh? I feel you, do. You, 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 you do it. I think we're both <laughs> been battling yeah. for the most. So, so we yeah, have German, Finnish, English, Swedish, French, um, Spanish. Finnish. Swedish, French, Spanish, Russian, and Polish. And it covers, I, I don't know uh, this, Christoph, but it covers the interface or also the, the products? Do you know? Um, no, the, the products are generic. So you, you mean like products like the Swagon products? Uh, yes. Yeah, like the yeah. Windows, uh, that kind of things. It's like the. Ah, okay. mm -hmm. Good, good point. Yeah. Um, it's available in in every language um okay. so so if and it's let, 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 let's say if it's a swedish manufacturer or german manufacturer um it's it's not related to the to the to the area where the manufacturer comes from but it's it's globally available okay but i mean like the the description will also be in different languages or only the interface do you know about that the description of the products if i select um, here for example Deutsch that you are familiar. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, it's um, okay. So, so basically, um, like let's let's take the um, yeah, we no, can no, see it in German. Yeah, yeah, and uh, so let's take here like like a screen system and um, uh, and say so I want to select the product. Uh, so I take this from the database and um and so now now here you see all the manufacturers that have provided their systems yeah but also the descriptions are also in german so and, that's yeah uh, yeah so so the the, the reference data that that's all in yeah. in so, in the language you've selected yes thank you we, we have more questions coming in um probably within the time frame we cannot answer all of them uh but there is a question uh from igor he's asking whether the ESBO plugin is also available in DDS CAT 14, Philippa. No, it's not available. This um, partnership started with the newest version. The, 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 the version that we have available now is DDS CAT 15. So yeah, the answer is no, it's not available in the previous versions, DDS CAT 14 or, or the others. So it starts on DDS CAT 15. And uh, something, yeah. And of course, we are going to. We are already planning to to improve this this bidirectional interface with Desbo. But again, the answer is this is started with DDS CAD 15, which is the, the the newest version available from DDS CAD. Perfect. Thank you. Um, what what will be the future between um, Equa as a company and DDS CAD? Are are they already planning something for the nearby future? Maybe. Can can you give a small insight, or is it uh, is it not available yet? Um, no, I mean basically it's an uh, uh, it's it's a, the let's say the tightness of the of the connection of the two softwares. This is something that uh, uh, that will improve uh, over time even further. Um, so we are we are thinking of. Um, uh, uh, exporting additional information, we haven't quite decided what we what we want to export uh, down here. And then uh, there's other 
possibilities that that we have been thinking of in the past like perhaps to have the option to also export uh, shading objects um, directly from from DDS cut so there's going to be ongoing developments uh, uh, over time that uh, we will then make available to 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 our customers all right perfect um, question in general uh, to Felipe how how to get DDS and SBO okay so you um, um... I think I pronounced it correctly. Yeah, you, you, you can talk to your reseller depending on, on the country you live. If uh, you, the country, the location you were, we don't have a reseller, then you can directly talk to, to us from DDS. So yeah, you, you, we can get, uh, get your contact, but uh, for in general, you, uh, to, to get this is the, is the same process as, yeah, for check, then you talk to Cadbeam. Uh, this is the reseller from DDS Cat in in Rep Czech Republic. Uh, in any other countries where we don't we don't have any, any reseller, it's um, directly with us from DDS. Okay. Any other question? There are some other questions about uh, performance, about recalculations, how, how fast is it? Um, well, maybe we can, um, is, the, is the option to have um, several si simulations uh, run after each other or can, we, can you um, say something about performance? Yeah, sure. Um, well, basically um, uh, there's other load calculation tools um, available which are not as sophisticated as uh, as the ESP environment and, and therefore um, a, a cooling load calculation in in uh, in ESP is going to take slightly longer uh, but you do have the advantage of a, of a more sophisticated system uh, but you've seen earlier on I mean we did here for five rooms a cooling load calculation that probably was less than a minute um, so we're not talking about um, days and days what what a simulation um, will will take, and um, in in Espo um, you can only start one instance. So if you want to, uh, like um, we had here in this case, um, Philippe um, performing a, a cooling load calculation just for the office spaces. If you want would make if you would want to make a sequence of, of calculations uh, for different room types, um, then you would need to invoke them uh, manually. Right, perfect, thank you. There are more questions coming in. Uh, when I look to the time uh, slots, uh, we are close to the end of the webinar, so all the other questions will be answered directly. We have your credential, and thank you for that. And I will give back the word to Philippe and uh, Christoph for the ending of the webinar. All right, so... Thank you very much for attending and taking this time with us. I think uh, it was superb. All the, the um, what we could learn today, I learned a lot. I'm learning how to work with Lesbo, <laughs> and um, I, I would like to to thank also Dr. Christoph for for the time he spent with us today. And, yeah, uh, no, that's uh, that's a pleasure. And, <laughs> uh, and yeah, also thank you from from my side uh, from from the aqua side really and uh, for us it's great to have this this integration uh, with dds cut um, because we we really want to make our simulation environment um, uh, available to to a wider audience and especially hvac engineers this is really um, a key user group uh, that we that we want to target and uh, yeah, so that's been great. Thanks for all the questions. It's been very interactive. Uh, really appreciated that. And um, if you have any other questions uh, coming up that would relate to me, of course, you can also contact DDS card and they will really uh, relay them back to me. And uh, yeah, apart from that, it remains for me is wishing you a nice day and perhaps we'll see you in the next webinar. Sure. Thank you very much. We will record this session and uh, we will public on uh, publish on on a YouTube channel. So see you next time. Bye bye. Bye.